So in this video, we're going to take a simple 3D model and using various software tools, go ahead and configure it for multiple color printing. So this is a single STL. And uh, in this particular case, it's um, not a fancy STL. It's just a single um, model that has uh, my name happens to be in it. Um, so we can see here that this model is about six millimeters tall. I just scaled it up. Uh, so it's six. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice it so that the bottom portion prints in one color and the top portion prints in another color. Uh, so right now, if I look at this, if I tried to slice it, uh, you'll see that we have four colors for the chameleon in here. I'm only going to select color one. And uh, actually, I guess in my video, in my settings here, I have it set up already to start and stop printing at a certain height. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Do the same thing again. There we go. So now we can see we have the, the full model. And in this case, I actually have some uh, color settings already uh, set up here so that they can print uh, the the purge wall or the purge block and the ooze shield wall around it. Um, let's go ahead and turn those off real quick. So we're just going to turn the prime pillar and the ooze shield off. And we'll do the same thing for color two. So now when I print it, uh, we should just end up with the one object. There we go. Looks good. So let's go ahead and configure this for multiple color printing and show you how you can do that. Uh, so in this particular case, what I have is a single model. And um, you can see it's whatever this name is up here. Um, I can go through here and choose the uh, slice tool. And as I move up and down through that, you can see that as I go through here, at about 3.6 millimeters tall, that's where this shelf is, where the, the bill starts to uh, start. Um, and you can see right there, right there at 3.7 is the transition into the other, uh, off of this shelf here and into the, just the letters portion. So let's remember that value, 3.7. And what we're going to do is we're going to take color one and we're going to apply it to our model. And we're going to tell color one, let's go ahead and stop printing at 3.7 millimeters tall. And then we're going to go ahead and take color two again, apply it to the same model, but we're going to tell it to start at 3.7 millimeters tall. So what's going to happen is it's going to use color one up through the first 3.7 millimeters. Then it's automatically going to switch to color two for the next few millimeters. When we select them to print, we need to make sure we select both process number one and number two and hit OK. And you see right there, it's actually changed. So now I have a two color model using a single STL. So that's all there is to doing that with uh, a single model within uh, Simplify. Other tools uh, like Prusa Slicer and uh, Cura, they have a very similar mechanism. Uh, they might use a, a block that you put in there to say transition from one to the other. Um, some of them actually might have a, a sliding toolbar that allows you to select that, like Prusa Slicer. Um, that's all there is to that. Um, but let's go ahead and do it another way. Let's go ahead and take this model, load it into Tinkercad, break it apart so that maybe we can make the letters different colors as well. So let's go ahead and uh, navigate over to Tinkercad. And uh, let's go ahead and create a new design. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and import my, my file. So that was simply called Bill Name Badge. So here you can see the file. Let's go ahead and scale it up some. I think I had it six millimeters before, so there we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slice this up into a few different objects. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to copy it, paste it out of the way over there. Let's put this one back here. And I'm going to bring out some boxes that are holes. So we can make a solid object or a whole object. And to, to, uh, to uh, cover the entire model, I'm just going to drag it around there so it covers it all up. And then I'm going to go ahead and raise this up. 
And there you can see I've raised it up to four millimeters tall. We did it at 3.7 in the other software. So let's go back to 3.7. And now I'm going to um, join these together using this group button. You can hit control G. And that created the lowest level of the model. That's good. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste that again. Only this time what I'm going to do is create a box that covers it that is exactly 3.7 millimeters tall. Oops, did the wrong side of it. 3.7 millimeters tall. And we're going to go ahead and group those as well. And now you can see what I've done is basically erased the bottom part of this one and I've erased the top part of this one. So let's go ahead and give it a different color so we can see that they're different. And we can now align these together. Um, so the way we align that is we click on this tool right here and we can simply bring them together just like that. So there you can see I have a two color part. Let's go ahead and uh, move this out of the way. Paste another one here just for so wrong one here. Let's grab these two, copy, paste. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change uh, the letters inside of here. Um, we'll make them a little bit different. So let's go ahead and copy and paste that just by itself. And we're going to go ahead and put a block. like that and basically what this is going to do is separate the letters from the border okay just like that so let's go back and copy this guy again and then this time uh, what we're going to do is the same thing um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little trick where right now we have this block that's, that's uh, removing the, uh, well, like in this case, I removed the center, but I, what I want to do is remove the outer edge of it. Um, so to do that, I'm actually going to copy this one, and I'm going to pull out, I'm going to ungroup it, and I have this block in the middle, okay, and that's the block we want to keep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this block and this block, I'm going to make this a solid one, and I make this one a hollow one. I'm going to make him a little taller so that he'll fit. And I'm going to line these two up with each other so they're centered. And then I'm going to group them. So that grouped it and it made this outline. And now I can take the outline and turn it back into a hole and align that over this object. So again, we're going to center those two objects. And now what I've left with is once I group these together, just the bill in the center. So what I've done is I've used their objects to create a, a, a object. Let's go ahead and change its color as well. And what I can do from this point is take these and center them on here. So let's remove this blue. Let's take this and center that on here. Actually, we're just going to take all three of these and we're just going to center them all together. So center, center, and that lined it all back up. So there you can see now I have a, a three color object and I, I like, let's make this a different color. Let's make that purple just so we can see there's three different colors. And then of course, I can then if I want to take the, uh, the bill uh, portion itself and we can and take that and we'll remove the dot and we can now take another one and we can remove everything but the dot i could do it similarly the way i did before or i can um do oops you know just paste a few blocks like this doesn't make any difference. It doesn't hurt it. There we go. So now I've, I've uh, hidden everything but that dot. So let's make the dot a different color. Let's make it uh, bright red. 
So again, so now we have uh, these and we can now take this one off. Actually, let's, let's copy this. Make sure we keep us keep one hidden over here, just nice and out of the way. So let's again center all of these. Okay, now the dot isn't in the right location um, because it's not centered on where everything else was centered. But we can easily just walk it back up to that spot. And here we can see it's not exactly right, um, so we can change our alignment. Something like that. Let's come up one more. There we go. And I'm just hitting the arrow key to move it around. So there we go. There's our, let's make that a white so they can see that. There we go. So there's our simple little four color part. Um, so we went from a single color part to a dual color, to a three color, to a four color. And we can just continue to do that uh, to as many uh, objects as we want. So it's actually really simple to do that. Now, to save these objects out for printing, what we want to do is save them. We're going to give it a, a, a name. Let's call it Bill uh, Badge. And um, let's say, for example, we're just going to do a two color. You're going to do the same thing, whether it's two color, three color, four color, whatever. Uh, you're going to take the lowest layer that you want. And let's just call this one, color one. We're going to export that as an STL. So now you can see it saved it as Bill Badge STL. I'm then going to take the second part of that, change the name of it up here to number two, and we're going to export that again as um, the, an STL file. So now I have two STL files. And let's go ahead and load them back up into our slicer here. So let's just remove that. We'll import both Bill Badges. They're on the desktop. And they're called well where did it I guess it oh it didn't put them on the desktop it put them in the downloads folder so let's go to the downloads folder there we go bill badge one and bill badge two we'll open those up and here you can see what it's done is it's uh, loaded the two models but they're not aligned to each other uh, to align them what we're going to do is just uh, uh, select both of them um, so we can do a shift and select and that grabs both and then we can hold down control shift and center and, and hit the center and arrange and that aligns them up so now we have both of our objects lined up and you can see they're stacked up as well and now what we're going to do is go ahead and assign them to the extruders that we want um, so I'm going to undo the start and stop at heights that I had earlier because we don't really want to do that and uh, let's make sure these don't have them as well they don't good and let's just say for example you you might have a two color or a four color chameleon let's go with a four color but let's make these two parts um, colors three and colors four uh, and simplify the way you select them is you, you click on the part that you want to assign an extruder you double click on the extruder and you say select model you notice that we have badge one and badge two so i'm going to make color three the bottom part which is badge one and I'm going to make color four the top part, which was badge two. So I've unselected badge one, and I've selected badge two. So now when I slice this, I'm just going to pick those two colors. And voila, now I have my sliced colors. Now it's only showing them as blue and uh, uh, red, but you can see the name is color four and color three, which is correct. Um, let's go ahead and do this in one of the other slicers. Let's pick, uh, let's go to Prusa Slicer. And Prusa Slicer takes just a second to load if this is the first time. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and um, load up a model. Actually, let's switch over to the correct printer. So we're going to switch over to a uh, Prusa Mini with the Chameleon or the Creality Ender 3 with the Chameleon. Let's go with uh, the Ender 3 with the Chameleon on it. There we go. 
And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and load the two models that we had before. So there's bill badge one and two. And it notices that they were loaded for a multi-material printer. Instead of considering them as single objects, it's asking, should we represent them as one object? And I'm just going to say yes, um, because um, that's exactly what we wanted to do. You will also notice that it automatically selected, since it saw two different parts, it automatically selected two different extruders. Um, and, and so I didn't even have to do anything. It recognized it right away. When I hit slice, voila, it's automatically sliced it for that multi-material. So you can see that there was no, no configuration or anything that I had to do to set this up to, to get it to work correctly. Now let's say, for example, I don't really want these colors, I want the other colors. Well, that's a simple matter of just double clicking on the extruder and picking the new one that you want. Uh, so let's make that one number two, and let's make this one number one, and then we'll re-slice it, and there you can see now I've reversed the colors. Now, in this particular case, I do not have any of the other additional color uh, changing feature things turned on, um, but those are all just setting up um, how you want that to print within your uh, your configuration. So um, whether we're doing the, uh, the purge uh, block or anything like that, um, but this is enough to actually trigger it to cause it to change the colors for us. So that's Prusa Slicer's version of it. Uh, we can also go to, uh, um, let's see, let's go to Cura. I guess I have to type that one in on this one. Okay, so in uh, Cure, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and load my models. And again, we're going to go back to our, our downloads folder, which is So there I have the two objects. Um, I'm going to go ahead and before I uh, merge these together, I'm going to go ahead and assign an extruder for each one. So on this one, I'm going to set uh, that to uh, extruder number one. And on this one, I'm going to set it to extruder number two. So now you can see they're both blue and yellow. And I'm now going to select them both, and I'm going to say merge models. And there, it's automatically merged the models for us. So I can uh, move this around wherever I want. and. Uh, again, that's all there is to it. I can slice this file. And when I go to preview it, you'll see that it's automatically got the purge. Uh, it's got the ooze shield around it, and it has the model set up as a dual color model. Again, that's all there is to it. So very easy to work with, um, whether that's Cura, whether it's Simplify. Um, pretty much all the slicers have this exact same capability. Uh, maybe done in a little bit different way, but they all can do exactly the same thing. Um, I use Tinkercad to do this. This is literally one of the easiest tools to do that with. Um, you can, uh, for example, maybe you want to change the, uh, the uh, dot here to a little heart or some other shape. Um, you can see we have all kinds of shapes here. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's go ahead and uh, drop a little heart on there. And... Go ahead and turn that back to red. You know, so maybe it's uh, something like that, what you want to do. This tool is incredibly easy to use. There we go. Don't typically see my name done that way, but <laughs> um, so that's, that's it. And then if you wanted to export that, you can literally export each one of these as a separate color. Uh, as a separate file. And one of the things I like to do is instead of naming them, you know, Bill Badge, I, I might name this Bill Badge um, Heart or Red, you know, depending on how you want to set it up. And then once I've set that as Red I, in my, uh, my slicer, I would actually name that particular object or that layer that color. You know, that way it's easy to know which ones you are printing and which ones you're selecting. So how you want to configure that. So that's all there is to it.
um, multi-material, multi-color is very easy to do with these tools. Thanks for watching.